Trading Night, episode 134. Oh, so structure is everything. Uh, structure is where liquidity is sitting. So that's our target points. And we exit based on if there's a change in trend. The market's going to do something. Your job is not to fight it. The market never, ever runs away. It's always there. That personal diary of trading will make you a much better trader than I could be right about the direction, but wrong about the trade. Don't focus on the monetary side. Trying to make too much money on a trade is what I have seen killed every trader. Your losses offer you some of the greatest insight you can find into your mistakes. Relax, learn the process. Candlestick pattern training is a freaking trap. Don't be in a rush to become a millionaire. Let the market tell you what the market wants to tell you. This podcast is not financial, trading, or investing advice of any kind. What's up, traders? Welcome to another installment of the Trading Up Podcast. I'm your host, Cam Hawkins, and today we've got Tans from Vertex Investments on the show. This is some doozy of an episode, okay? Not just this episode, but the video we shot afterwards as well. Tans basically breaks down his entire, entire trading strategy, and it's not just a run-of-the-mill strategy. This one here actually has humongous reward potential like i'm talking mega r trades like humongous i mean the guy enters on the five second chart we don't get that in the video but we get pretty much everything else so you guys you got to check this out this is so good i know you're gonna love it now before we jump into it which i know you're dying to i do want to quickly share something that uh, occurred to me this week so my wife asked me uh, have you got a growth have i got a growth mindset or a fixed mindset and i said oh i think you've probably got a growth mindset Anyway, she's reading a book, and she said, according to the book, that she had a fixed mindset. And the book gave a really unique way, and I'm telling you this because it relates back to trading, a really unique way of looking at a growth and a fixed mindset. So a growth mindset is very much if you make a mistake, you love it. You think, great, I can learn from that. I can move on. I can find a better way. Fixed mindset is if you make a mistake, you don't want to know. You only want to know when you get it right. Okay, so what I realized was, I've got certain parts of my life where I've got a growth mindset and certain parts where I've got a fixed mindset. Uh, So, for example, football, I have a fixed mindset. When I play a game of football, I don't really want to grow. I don't want to be making mistakes. I don't want to know if I make mistakes. Um, I'm not learning to grow. I've been playing for years and years. I'm done. You know, this, I'm sort of at the the twilight of my career, I'm not learning, I'm not looking to learn anything here new. Uh, But with everything else, pretty much everything else in my life, it's been a growth mindset. Although, that said, when I look back at my trading, that was also in a fixed mindset for a long, long time where I didn't like losing, I didn't like making mistakes, I didn't want to learn from those mistakes. So guys, my challenge for you this week is to check whether or not you have a growth or a fixed mindset. And if your trading is in a fixed mindset, then you need to somehow switch it to a growth mindset. Guys, job for you there. Okay. Now, um, also another job for you is to check out my Robot Builders Club. If that's something that you might want to be looking to do is turn some or all of your trading strategy or any strategy you come up with into a fully or semi-automated trading robot, then the doors are still open for that. They will be closing soon. So if you do want to come on board now is the time to do it. Uh, I've got live Q&A calls. You get 30 plus ready mode robots when you join. All of this gets imported and there's no uh, coding at all. Okay, no coding at all and you can build virtually anything. Guys, if you want to check that out, it's all over there on Trading Art along with this episode and the video we shot afterwards with Tans. In the meantime, let's just get on with it. Here we go. Tans from Vertex Investments. Hey folks, my sponsors City Traders Imperium have just launched some amazing changes to their funded trader program you got to check out. You can now skip the whole evaluation, trade gold as well as Forex, plus they've increased the drawdown you're allowed in both the evaluation and when funded. With CTI, it's even faster and easier to reach up to $4 million in funding with a 50 to 70% profit share. Click the link in the description to find out what else has changed. All right, folks, here we are on Trading Up. We've got Tans here all the way from uh, the UK. Welcome to the show, Tans. Hello, hello. How is everyone? Well, 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 how is everyone? <laughs> it's a YouTube, isn't it? <laughs> Well, we're, all, we're all good over here in New Zealand. Um, so Tans is from Vertex uh, Investments, and you were recommended by one of the listeners on the show, and they said you got to get them, you got to get these guys on. I know there's a group of you, um, but you're obviously the representative here. 
get you on the show to hear your story and I've actually caught a couple of your videos um, like what you're doing and what you're going to discover here guys is some ridiculous uh, risk to reward kind of trades and I'm intrigued to find out more because um, what you showed in that video that I did see it looked like you know there was you guys have found that obviously a better way to do it or a more effective way to do it to get squeeze out more from these these high probability trades, um, sorry, or high return trades. I don't know about the probability, but we'll find out about that soon. Yeah. Now to start off with, Tans, do you want to share your story? How did you get into trading, and and maybe you can sort of weave in how the other guys that are part of your uh, Vertex outfit uh, got in, involved in the mix as well. Yeah. Uh, firstly, thank you to the listener who actually recommended us. It was uh, when you met, when you emailed us, it was uh, it was very random, and I, I didn't expect it at all. So it was, yeah, thank you for reaching out to us. Um, yeah. So I started trading uh, when I was eighteen. Uh, I was in uni, and initially that was signals. So I did signals for about a year, as in I followed signals. Um, I don't know how what your experience is like with signals, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't great. It wasn't great. And at this time, I was still in uni, so I was starting to be a physiotherapist. Is that what you guys, do you guys call them physiotherapists? Yeah, physio, yeah, yeah. that sort of yeah. thing, yeah. Um, so during the first year, I had a, I had several deposits. I don't know how many times I deposited. And bear in mind, as a student at that point, I really couldn't, I couldn't afford to do so. So it was sort of kept quiet for my parents at that point. Um, but there was two particular trades, um, that hit TP overnight. This is from a signal, and they both hit £21 each. And it was those two trades that actually told me that, uh, you know, there's money to be made from uh, from trading, but signal's just not the way to go. And then uh, from the next next two years, I focused on learning myself. So I bought several courses. And I think, I think at the time, uh, technical trading was probably the most used as in like trend lines fibs uh and so on but i just couldn't get my head head round it and i came across this youtube channel um am i allowed to say his name or yeah of course yeah yeah so his name's wb trading um who trades mechanically and then when i you know when i saw his videos it was basically like you set and forget and i joined him and ever since then my eyes have been open to the rule-based method of trading and then since then, is that's how I've ever thought. So for those two years, I focused on because uh, the risk to reward on that trade on that sort of strategy that I was focused on, on focusing on was a one to one, one to two, which is fine. But then I realised in the long run, it's not it's not ideal. Like you can get through a string of losses and that's it. Your your wins are basically irrelevant in that sense. Um, so I spent time trying to refine that to get to one to three, one to four. And it was fairly consistent and it was, it was working. I was able to work and study uh, full time as well as trade. So it was okay. Um, and then after two years, uh, I actually joined a signal team. And that was when I met James, who's uh, one of the Vertex mentors. So James was already part of this team and he, me and him were doing the signals for this group. And we did signals for, uh, with this thing was for about a year or so. Yeah, about a year or so. So I waited till I was profitable till I actually joined, uh, which took about two years. Um, and then, we, yeah, we ran signals. And then it was, the problem with running signals is we have, people have high expectations. You have a lot of uh, messages, emails, like saying, why didn't this trade win and so on? And it didn't seem worth it. And then from there, I started to teach what I, what how I trade. Um, and then Ben came along at that point. So Ben, me and Ben met at a different, uh, like an education company. So we were working as uh, mentors as such. Um, and then Ben started Vertex. So Ben, yeah, Ben originally, originally started Vertex uh, back in November 2019, I believe, or September, something like that. And then I joined in the following year. Um, and then we became, yeah, so me and Ben started Vertex and created what it is today. And then James James joined in. But the concept about, you know, the high probability trades that we trade now, this is a very short story, by the way, but, but the concept of this actually came from Nick. And Nick was a signal client from me for me and James. So 
two two years ago nick was a signal client and now then he progressed to his own trading he messaged me and james about it i ignored him for god knows how long because for me he was just a signal client but then uh he was showing me his trades and i thought you know i'll give it a go and see if it actually does make sense because some of the risk rewards sounds sounded uh unrealistic and it probably sounds unrealistic to you as well it's Hey, just jumping in here with a message from my sponsor, Sage Strategies. Do you want to trade gold and crypto like the institutions? Well, now you can, and it's free for 14 days with Sage Strategies, fully automated trading strategies. Check out their live track records for 25 unique strategies, plus they'll host everything for you, which is perfect for beginners and advanced traders or investors. Simply sign up for their 14-day free trial at sagestrategies.io and experience it for yourself. Do you, want, do you want to explain what these risk rewards are for the guys that haven't like are familiar with what you do? Yeah, so he was analyzing trades that were hitting like one to forty, one to fifty, and I think there was one trade which actually got me. It was a one to uh, one to one hundred on uh, GP JPY, and when I saw that, I thought, okay, I need to give it a try and see. And then since then, we've been working together, refining what we can. And then the issue was me with me was I can't. I don't like having such a like, I don't like having guesswork in trading. So that's when I introduce a rule based approach to using smart money concepts and that's what we have today. Cool. And uh, that's what we're teaching. So you so you'd sort of sum up your approach to trading as smart money concepts? Yes. A- yeah, anything yeah. else added to that? Yeah, so um so at Vertis we believe that, you know, any strategy with an edge works. You know, it's not like one strategy is not better than the other. The only difference is the risk to reward. So I still teach like my previous strategies because I know they work and they're all rule based. Um, And I think that's the main difference is the fact that it's all focused on strict rules that you have to follow. And it takes away the guesswork. You're basically just waiting for your rules to set out. It, you know, you can sit on your hands and just wait for your rules basically. And from there, that's when I noticed my consistency. That's where that came from. Um, because I think people have that issue when you first start, you're thinking, you know, you're always trying to guess what's going to happen next. Whereas my thinking is you follow your rules and that's it. So, yeah, that's and, that, that's the main thing. And so you sort of went from like one to ones, one to twos, even one to threes and one to fours. I mean, what yeah. what was trading that way like compared to trading the, the one to forties, one to one hundreds? Yeah. Another thing before I like, go on, but like, Sometimes when you see, and it's marketed so well for some people, but like when you see like one to forties, one to fifties, uh, you have to bear in mind that people take partials along the way. So like a, like a trade I'll show you is running at one to 50 or so, but I've closed, I've closed like 20 R on that trade. So I've only got, I've only got about quarter volume running. So the, even though the TP is one to 68, I believe, um, you know, it's not going to close at 68% or 68 R or anything like that. It's just the whole analysis. But the change was, and the biggest change was for, for me last year, it was the best trading year that I've ever had in terms of uh, my return. And I think it's the speed of the, okay, that could be interpreted quite badly to be fair, but it was the growth of the account last year, which was crazy. Like the last few years was, was consistent um, and I was doing well the edge was perfect but then it was like i was achieving what i achieved in a year in the space of two months right which is sounds it it was it was bizarre like it's it still baffles me today like some of the like the understanding behind it and uh yeah, it's crazy. Hey, folks, if you want 10% off the Vertex Investing Trade Management or their two-day boot camp, then use this promo code here at checkout. It's TN10. Use TN10 at checkout on the vertexinvesting.com website, and you're going to save yourself 10% off here with Trading Nut. And, and, and what was the sort of, I suppose, if you had to sort of sum up what you can sum up around what yeah. Nick had discovered or done versus what you guys were doing or yourself was doing, what, 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 was, what was the difference? So the difference mainly was when Nick uh, addressed it to me, it was um, it was more about uh, Wyckoff or Wyckoff, if you heard of that, yep. with all the schematics. And as soon as I saw the schematics, I knew I'm not going to get it. Like, it is the most confusing thing to look at. Like, for any new trader, if you look at a schematic, you know, you'll be put off. 
Um, but because it's sort of like, it's somewhat of a pattern. And then I went and back tested that pattern several times to understand what is a repeating cycle that is happening. Because the market is essentially a cycle, you know, it, the same things, it, re- it repeats and repeats and repeats. And uh, I realized that I don't need to know the phases of the schematics um, as long as I can sum up, sum up, sum it up to uh, a rule-based understanding, I'll be okay. Because what? Because Nick's got a very good understanding of uh, of the schematics, and which is really good. But for me, I just can't get my head around it. Um, I don't, I don't have it in me to even to understand that. Because I was speaking to when I speak to the like, other traders, um, I'm sure you've heard of Ment FX at all. Yeah, I have actually. I, I did reach out to him recently. Um, ah, and nice. so he might he might come on the show uh, we're, sit, we're, we're discussing his requirements <laughs> oh, <laughs> we, right. but there's a chance he might come on oh sweet yeah so I had a few uh, calls with him we were just, ca- just catching up and when he was just explaining the schematics we were comparing the strategies he was explaining his schematics and then it boiled down to my two rules that we teach at Vertex and you know it just shows that your understanding can be so different, but you can have the same result, same result. But that was the main difference, which I couldn't grasp from Nick and Nick couldn't really teach me either. But it's not something that I don't think in that way, if that makes sense. And then James sort of tied in with both of us because he's quite, he was always a technical trader. So he was quite good at grasping those sort of concepts. But I think we've found consistency in having this uh, rule-based approach. Which is quite nice that everyone is now. So uh, you sort of put, have you put rules around Wyckoff? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. So it's all based on two rules. We've had two rules for everything. So two rules for our structure and two rules for our entry. And um, I mean, in terms of like what you were doing with your three to one, three to ones, and four to ones, and that sort of thing, versus now, it was it the same entries, but just with a more refined stop loss, or was it completely um, so... different entries? Yeah, so the strategy was so the previous strategy was basically supply and demand. It was around engulfing candles, um, and you just trade off the supply zone and the demand zone. But your stop loss would be it's basically a refinement to that. So the stop loss would be like 30, 40 pips at times with the old strategy, and you would aim for that the the engulfing candle low, engulfing candle high, anything like that, or your structure points. Whereas now we sort of pinpoint where price is going to react from. It's not always going to be exact, but we pinpoint where price is going to react from. So we catch it at the apex of, of the move as opposed to allowing that drawdown. So that's the main difference. So the strategy was based off the same sort of idea, but just with the added refinements. Nice. Cool. Um, Okay, so uh, signals. I just want to quickly touch on that. Um, I mean, what as somebody who's sort of been through the washer with signals, um, what's your sort of general, you know, summary for anyone out there who's either trading signals or thinking about trading them or um, has been through and done it, done been there and done that and given up on them? Yeah, I would say, you know, I think nowadays for people starting now, I think they have more exposure to signal scams and the fact that signals signals don't work because in my opinion signals just don't work it doesn't matter who you follow um even if the person is profitable it's just difficult to get every single trade that that person is taking because for you to be profitable you need to take every single trade right and sometimes say when i was doing signals people based all over the world they can't catch the same timings that uh, i would trade for example even though it's london it was only london and us i don't trade any other time um, it was hard for everyone to catch on to them. Some people would just catch the losers, which it's a shame, but it does happen. Like to me, I missed so many signals when I was doing it. Um, when I was copying signals, it just doesn't. I didn't find I didn't find any profitability from it. But um, as I said, it was those two. I had two TPs ever from signals, and those are the two TPs. Those two TPs are the reason that I'm trading today, because it showed me that you can make something from it is just a matter of how you how you go about it because it was like 20 it was on a 200 pound account it was 21 pounds bear in mind it was over leverage i had no idea what lot sizes meant at that point um 
it was 21 pounds in the space of three hours it was some crash or something that happened on uh new zealand dollar it was it was crazy and i was so excited i actually withdrew <laughs> i actually withdrew that day <laughs> Did you? um just for the sake of uh having it um yeah. but yeah it, signals it doesn't work i mean we ran signals initially um in the space of four months we had a 78 percent return and that was my personal return but that doesn't mean that the clients had the same return if that makes sense because i still had uh messages emails saying that you know they're not at the same uh roi as me but that's purely because they miss trades they miss the alerts and so on uh, you know it you yeah, they take be, the losing trades and then they over leverage. Yeah, yeah that sort of it's thing. Hard. It's hard to be profitable. Yeah. You have to be on it all the time. You have to just sit there and wait for the signal to, to come up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. And um, uh, what I was going to ask here was around, oh, damn it, I've forgotten what the question was. <laughs> I'm struggling with, right? the, struggling with the cold here and um, I'm not quite onto it. Um, signal, signal, signals. I might have to edit this bit out. Damn it. What was going to ask? <laughs> I've been sick for the last three days. Really, probably the worst sickness I've oh, had. Um, I've just just come right today. Uh, signal client. Um, I don't know. I can't remember what it was. It was going to be good as well. Um, <laughs> right, <laughs> let's just move on. Um, we'll have to edit this bit out. I'll make a note of this. Right, can you give us some uh, insight into the stats around your trading? So, like, what pairs are you trading across? Uh, how many trades a week, that sort of thing? Yeah, so uh, primarily now, this year, I focused, uh, I'm just focusing on the major pairs. When I first started this concept, I was trading every single pair under the sun because I was so excited about this strategy. And this is where the difference in win rate comes. And this question we get so many times. So uh, at the moment, I'm trading uh, GU, EU, AU, EG, and GJ. Sometimes I would uh, move on to like other pairs like New Zealand dollar, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't go anything past that. And the reason is, is purely because of spread. Broker spread on those pairs are fairly tight. And because our stop loss are generally sub five pips, you want to have, uh, you know, good spread on your pairs. Although, because sometimes you also need to add spread to your stop loss when you trade. Um you don't want to sacrifice your R, your risk to reward too much, um, and that's a, that sounds a little bit greedy, but it, you know, it's a, there's, I don't know, it's, when you get used to using that small stop loss, it's kind of hard to go back. I think that's my sort of issue at that point. That's why I don't trade too many pairs uh, with bigger spreads. Can I just ask a question on that? I mean, what what's the um, what kind of order are you using to get in the market with your stop? Uh, limit limit orders, limit orders, limit orders, or stop orders. Yeah. Limit orders. Limit. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, really quite. I, 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 was, I was thinking that. I said the right thing there. Yeah, yeah limit orders. And, and, and what, what time frame are you using to get in? Um, so the time frames uh, differs. So at the moment, uh, our entry time frame, so actually I'll start from the, from the top. So my direction time frames are daily in the four hour, and the entry time frames would vary from one minute to the seconds time frames, depending on what is visually clear. Like if price uh, isn't clear to me, but to my eyes, then I'll go to whatever time frame. So we have, I think Nick does it more than I do, where he would pick some obscure time frames, like the seven minute, eight minute, twelve minute, some weird time frames, um, but just to make it visually clear. Um, and it's quite a big tip to be fair if you're starting this concept, because I think people try to fixate on you know the standard time frames you've got H four, H one, fifteen minute, and so on. If you're so busy trying to force like a setup in those time frames, you're gonna miss what is happening. And that's that was probably the hardest thing to overcome when I first started using this. Because you have to be because it's so precise, you have to be alert of what's actually happening in terms of price and analyze like each candle, analyze what price has broken, where price has moved, and the like momentum. And I explain a bit more when I share my chart anyway. Okay. But uh, okay. yeah, entry time frames are one minute and lower usually. And and is it is it quite a uh, intense or it sounds it sounds intensive in terms of getting into a trade? Is it intensive or is it like you know I can do a five minute analysis and bang I'm in? 
I'll set my order and I'll walk away. Yeah, so um, since January this year, uh, I've been focusing on swing trading purely because I realized last year I sort of reverted back to my old self where I was on the charts for several hours a day. And that's purely because out of excitement, to be fair, um, I think my excitement came back into trading last year from learning this because it was just amazing what you can what you can achieve with this strategy. Uh, but I've reverted back to my old self now where I'm taking my time. I don't trade as much now as, at all, and I just focus on the bigger moves. So sometimes our setups take a few days to actually just reach. So it's fairly relaxed depending on how you want to do it. So I would set alerts at my POIs and just not look at the charts until I need to. Mm-hmm. And the only time I'll look at a chart is if a student asks me to look at their their charts, for example. Um, other than that, I'll just wait for the alerts to go off. Um, like the trade I'll show you today, it took six days to reach the POI, but I did get a little bit, uh, a little bit impatient, and I'll show you the trade that I was wrong on as well. Okay. Um, yeah, it does, uh, it does vary in that sense. Um, I forgot what the question was. Um, I'll ask the question later on, and don't worry, good answers here. So, what about the? Um, we'll go back to the, the original question. What about uh, the? Sorry. Is that what you asked? Was it? Is it quite intensive? To... Yeah, was it intensive? Yeah. It sounds like it's, it's. It sounds like it's got periods of intensity, but separated between periods of like being patient and waiting, which is yeah. So fixed when, by the alert. Prior, when you, yeah, when your alert comes off, that's when you sort of need to focus. And this is another reason why I didn't want to do signals anymore because when price reaches the POI, because you're focusing on like the minute time frame or less, price is moving very quickly and. I don't want to sacrifice my own account for the sake of sending a signal out, for example. Like for, for students, I will send out the chart and the POI that I'm looking at, but they're expected to follow the rules to enter because I just don't have the time to look focus on anything else. Because for that brief, for that like five, ten minutes that you're waiting for your rules to play out for your entry, you know, you you need to be 100% there. And that's the reason why I can't focus on too many pairs because at times last year, uh, like so many alerts were off in one go, and I don't know what pairs to look at. And I remember this one, this pair that I hate. I, I can't describe how much I hate it. So it's Euro Swiss Franc. I don't know how much experience you have with Euro Swiss. I don't Frank. trade it at all. I hate it as oh well. Oh God! <laughs> it is the slowest pair ever. But I remember I was so fixated on this pair uh, for an entry. I missed an entry, and then GJ went on to move to one to twenty in the time that I was looking for an entry on Euro Swiss Frank and instantly it was gone. It was gone from the, from the watch list. That's, that was my issue. So I only focus on the majors uh, now because I know they're big movers and generally uh, something that I didn't focus on was the rate of return. The rate of return is higher um, than you work than on like exotic pairs or minor pairs to be fair. Cool. So yeah, it's fairly intensive when price comes to your POI. And, and so, like, just getting into the details around the alert. So I'm using alerts now where I draw a line on TradingView, and yeah. if price sets that line, I get an alert. I've had the same issue with you where it's like all these alerts happen, seem to happen at the same time when there's a big spike yeah, and whatever, yeah. and then you don't know what to do um, or which pair to focus on. So how do you how do you sort of deal with – where do you set your line to give you the alert uh, so that you've got enough time to get back to your machine? And what if you're not – buy a machine what happens then um so to be fair a lot of the time i have my ipad and my phone with me um and to be fair most of my trades i do off my ipad um and that's just from practicing uh because i used to struggle doing it off my phone and my ipad it used to be very difficult um because i'm not always buying a laptop or computer i don't always have one around me and i don't like that either um so I guess it took some took some time to get used to being able to do that on the on having your phone. To be fair, um, it's weird because everyone asks me that because there's some trades like this trade that I'll show you. I think I took when I was in bed. To be fair, um, and it just took, takes time to get used to being able to use it. Um, I can't remember the last time I really analysed. Not analysed. I can't remember the last time I took an entry from my PC itself. Like it's rare. They're, that's interesting. It's interesting to hear because it is it's probably something I should look at thinking about doing as well. Um, 
so I was forced to, um, as in because I was when I was working full time, I had no reason, I had no choice. Yeah, I had to do it off my phone. So my eyes have always been fixated to be able to look on my phone and do it. And um, what what about because I I mean I. I suppose if you're setting a limit order, how long between setting the limit order and the order being triggered is there, typically? Uh, not long. So say if you're trading off uh, the minute time frame or less, the trade would you play when you place your order, the trade should trigger in less than a few minutes. So you're not really that active. And this is when it comes back to your strike rate and probability. So our strike rate is seems a bit uh, too good to be true. But that's purely because we're taking more, we we'll probably take more break evens than losses. I don't know if people count as break evens as their losses or not, um, because we're able to move our stop loss to break even like fairly early on, like within like five, 10 minutes of being in the trade. Um, at that point, price is probably a one to five or one to 10, um, usually. Uh, and that's where our strike rate comes into play. Like last week, I took three trades lost one um so it does vary and if you're an aggressive trader like i was last year i was taking like 10 15 trades a week and to be fair the overexposure on my account was ridiculous but again it was a risk that i was willing to take um and i don't think i actually ex- i understood the true exposure but i wasn't setting a good example for students to be fair because it's not in my eyes it's not true investing like how I was before it was just pure excitement because yeah. um, I realized that you know if you're taking 10 15 trades you're risking I would say I, I so I use a 0.5 percent of my account per trade so say if I'm using 10 trades I'm risking five percent of my account in that one week so I can lose five percent and that's a you know it's a huge percentage to take as a loss um did I do the maths right yeah I did I did uh yeah, yeah. so um yeah, nowadays is more like I'm focused on the high high probability setups, and since January, well, since uh, the, I took a three week break at Christmas, I've been working on this added refinement, and since doing that, and that's using the second time frame. Since doing that, I'm able to break even a trade within a few minutes, like within two three minutes, I'm already break even, and you know if it goes back to break even, it does. The only thing you have to be aware of when you're doing it is. You'll play, you have to place a stop loss and somewhat profit because the charges on your account are huge because of the lot size that you're using. Yeah. So you do need to cover that. So you do you do have a small loss sometimes if you don't calculate it right. I don't always calculate it right, to be fair. Um, so there's a small loss in that sense. But and yeah, are you going to be really entering easy. like multiple times to get the break even? Sorry, to get uh, catch the actual trade. Or is it once it's uh, broke even, you're like, that trade's done, I move on to the next opportunity? Yeah, so um, so the POI that we have, uh, depending on the POI, if the POI is not violated, then I'll look to trade. Um, but generally, if you're correct, price shouldn't come back to, to your entry, if you are correct. And um, not saying I'm correct all the time, but generally it doesn't come back um, unless I'm wrong. Um, or sometimes it's price will come back to mitigate my entry point. And you just have to be aware of, you know, if your entry point is worth, if your entry point, if price can come back to your entry point or not. So we do have a risk management. We do have a way to manage that trade if that's the case in order to mitigate the loss where you'll close like a partial trade. So you'll close like 0.5% and leave your stop loss where it is. So if it does hit your stop loss, you know, you're okay. You're still break, break even. even. Yeah. Um, there's there's ways around it, but I think risk. I think the way people manage your risk is where profitability comes in. Because I can say, you know, I don't like giving a full figure for a strike rate because it's so difficult to uh, give someone's trading appetite. Because my appetite is probably less than a lot of people. Yeah, it's interesting. So, I mean. Like thinking about moving your stop to break even, I mean, where, at what point do you go? Is it like a fixed thing, like a one hour in profit, move to break even? Or is it more of a, if this level breaks and holds, then we we move to the stop to break even? Uh, so it's, it's all about structure. So if structure is broken, uh, generally confirms that we're correct. Uh, not all the time. It can just be a liquidity grab. We don't know. 
Uh, but generally, when structure is broken, we move to break even. And say if, like the first structure point, say if it's like 10R, generally we close half. So we secure 5R and then let the rest run. And what I realize is securing that 5R consistently is is crazy. It's it's actually, it's mad like how, and I think people forget, you know, 5R doesn't sound like a lot in terms of, in, in the smart money concepts uh, world, I'd say. 5R doesn't seem like a lot to close, but if you're doing it consistently on pretty much every trade you're taking, it adds up to a crazy, a crazy return across, across the week or month even. But that's mainly, see, I'll close, I'll close half at 10R if I'm going counter trend um, or if the timing for the trade is not right. So say if I enter a trade, like a, which I don't normally do, say if I enter a trade quite late for me, as in like past that 5, 5 p.m., it's too late for me to really trade. Like volume is not great. I would take 5R and then let the trade do whatever it needs to do. Sometimes it plays out. Sometimes it doesn't, but at least I know I've secured from that trade. So, so if, if you ever gets to like say four R and comes back and takes you out of break even, that's not a, not an issue for you. That's just like business as usual. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, the next one will probably go to five R and they'll take half. Blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. So the minimum is ten R for me to actually take anything off the table, and it's so annoying. Sometimes you get price that comes to like eight or nine R, and you're watching it. And it goes back to break even, you're like, ah. Oh. But in terms of psychology, paying yourself, and it's something that I talk about quite a lot, paying yourself is so big because, you know, if you're securing something, at least you're telling yourself, you know, that you're earning something and nothing from the market is guaranteed. So take what you can from the market, really. That's how I see it. It's not about aiming for the big risk to rewards all the time because it doesn't happen that often and you can't expect it to happen that often. And, you know, it's even worse when you hit like a 20 yard trade and it goes back to break even and you didn't close anything. Like how I can't explain how that feels. It's, it's, it's horrible. It's, it's not great. (laughs) It fully, it takes you back. It takes you back. Right. It's so, I mean, what is, if you go back to last year where you were taking 15 trades in a week, how many (laughs) of those would you break even? Uh, Way too many, but I think I was taking more losses, to be fair. My risk management, uh, there was less confirmation last year, as in I would have my POI and I set my limit on the POI itself rather than wait for the reaction, which is what I do now. Right. But now, nowadays, I'm waiting for the reaction and then waiting for another reaction just to confirm that first reaction was correct. So that's why the strike rate this year has been insane compared to compared to last year. But yeah, I, I took a lot of a string of losses last year. I think I took two weeks of losses, and that's where uh, that's what forced me. And that this was in at the end of July, yeah, end of July, I and mean, that's in August when I started to work on the added refinements. So although my account wasn't back at break even. But taking the string of losses is is horrible. Although you have the big risk to rewards, you know you say you can have you can have a ten R trade and then lose ten R, uh, lose ten trades and back, be back to break even that point. But I was fairly comfortable with my account size um, and how it's grown. That but still the two week losses fully that made me realise that I can't lose that much in one go. Like psychologically, it's it's horrible and it's really hard to bounce back from. Um, and it was a good learning point, and I think everyone learns from the losses. Uh, so in August, that's when I worked on the added refinements. So me, James, Nick, and Ben, we worked together to find, you know, what works, what doesn't work. And, yeah, it's I think since from November, we've been fairly – everything's been working really good. Uh, it's been really consistent. And then January, for me – because uh, the others haven't really started the others didn't really start doing the extra confirmation that I do now uh, but January since January for me the strike rate has been unreal it's been crazy cool now um, diving into some of the other questions I've got here like what would you say your typical trading day looks like uh, typical trading day so so I so I still by background I'm a physio and I run a physio company as well um, so I juggled the two 
Um, so I trade a few hours. I sit about two, three hours during London, and then I'll go off and do whatever I need to do. Um, and I'm only sitting at the charts for like two, three hours a day. Sometimes I'll come back during London, but I'll just monitor price on my phone. So on Monday evenings, I would set my alerts, whatever, where my high probability POIs are, and just wait for them. Um, and then if I've got the time, I will take intraday trades. That's only if I'm 100% there and if I've actually got the time to do it. Say if I need to like rush for something after, say like I sit at 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning and I've got a meeting at 11, I wouldn't force an intraday at that time because I know that I've got something else on my mind. I think psychology for me is such a big, such a big thing that I'm very controlled as to my environment which I don't think a lot of people are, to be fair. It's something that I try to portray across to a student, to our students, but, uh, you know, whether it gets adhered to or not, I'm not sure. But it's a big, it's such a big thing. It's such a big thing. But it's fairly relaxed. It's, uh, I'm not on the, on the charts all the time. It's a few hours of here and there. So so uh, you mentioned you're, you've got a, your own physio firm. Um, yeah. I mean, what's, how does that sort of, I suppose the question is, yeah, there's a lot of people out there, and I mean, you're a young guy, who who are trying to get out of that sort of the whatever they call it, the rat race, or you know, yeah, that yeah. their day job or whatever it is. I know you run it, but I mean, is there was there a, was that a con- conscious decision of yours to say, hey, look, I actually want to be part of society and and out there and doing this sort of stuff, helping people as well as trade, or why did you decide to like combine yeah. the two? Yeah, so a big passion of mine was to be involved in healthcare from the, from the start. Like that's the reason why I went to uni to study it, and I worked in our healthcare system, um, the NHS, as you may be aware of, um, about our healthcare system. I wanted to give back to our system, to our healthcare, and then um, probably my second year, I did I did leave physio for a while. And I had like three months and I thought, you know, I'm a full-time trader. I can do whatever I want. My partner's still a physio and she works for the healthcare system. And I was on my on my own at home. And to be honest, being young, you know, I don't want to be sitting around doing nothing. I want to be actually active doing something. And to be fair, the pay in our healthcare system is not great. Um, and I knew I needed another stream of income to... Because trading, I can't guarantee that I'm going to make this amount. Like I'm not going to be, I can't guarantee that I'm going to make my mortgage uh, or pay my bills or pay for my car and so on. Um, and I knew I had to do something. And physio is still a passion from of it's a still a passion of mine. And I didn't study three years to you know just to leave it. So that's when I branched out and started working on my own my own thing, my own company, which my partner now works with me. And um, it's just enjoyment, to be fair. I think people want to leave purely because they don't enjoy the job, whereas I love it. Um, I love everything about physio. It's, it's, uh, for me, it's rewarding. And that's the main thing. With trading, I don't feel that sense of reward. Like Actively, I don't see clients as, as a physio anymore. I just don't have the time to do that. But I focus on the development of physio, so I teach. Um, that's a passion of mine to to teach basically um, that's the reason why I teach trading to be fair I, I enjoy teaching, the aspect of teaching is, is great, awesome. but the rewarding aspect comes from physio as opposed to trading cool. trading you can do stuff with it um, in terms of what you do with your money afterwards to, to make it rewarding, but for me I think the change I need something some sort of feedback to make me feel like I'm doing something in life, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, look, after after having a back injury recently and going to the physio, I, I know what you guys do, so uh, appreciate the, all the work there. Um, now, diving back into the price charts, what are you? Yeah. What three things would you recommend somebody go off and start studying on a chart? Uh, I think the biggest thing, and to be fair, chart time is your best educator. You need to just understand what price, what price is doing, and what you realize is repeated patterns and it sounds easy to say but and people you say all the time and i used to ignore it but from that back testing sessions that you do and forward testing sessions you'll see the repeated patterns yourself and you'll gain that understanding because 
I can teach you, so I can teach everything, but people, and you can teach anyone, right? But without having that true understanding of your own, you you will struggle to find any sense of consistency. So what I would suggest is, is opening up a chart. Well, firstly, having a strategy in place that you can actually implement and then backtest it as long as you can. It's not about making money from the get-go. Uh, don't focus on the money aspect. And I think that's a good point to bring. I didn't have that stress. Because I was working full-time, I didn't have the stress of making money from trading when I first started. And I think that's what a lot of people have where, and I get these messages every day where, you know, trading is a last resort. And if you're trading with that, you will struggle to find any form of consistency because you're forcing everything. Whereas I didn't, I didn't, I thankfully didn't have that pressure um, because I was earning, earning full time anyway. Um, so, so yeah, so, okay. have a strategy in place. So when they're doing, when they're doing this back testing session, I mean, what, what stuff sh- do, should they be looking out for? Do you think people should look out for? So depending on what strategy you use, even if you want to use the free strategy that we show, just focus on how price is reacting to um, the POIs that you know that you show. So it's kind of hard to describe it, to be fair. So three things, I don't know how to say it, three things, to be fair. Um, understand price and understand uh, the reactions. That's the main thing. Price action is everything in terms of trading but indicators i've used in the past i don't know about your experience with indicators but i've had no success with indicators at all um i've realized that most of it is just understanding what each candle is doing understanding where price is heading as long as you can understand direction direction and market structure if you can understand that with a good level of understanding you should be okay Cool. And um, thinking about our trader's mindset, what do you have any special techniques you can share with us to help get someone in the right mindset or fix their mindset issues? Yeah, so mindset is quite uh, mindset is quite a big thing because a lot of people come in thinking, especially when they see like our risk reward, they'll come in thinking they can replicate it within a few days. And I think the majority of our students come in with that aspect. Um, actually, I'm not, actually, I'm not going to knock them, but not majority, some of them. Some of them come in with that mindset thinking, you know, they'd be able to replicate it. And the thing is, it's hard to replicate the experience. So don't don't always, don't compare to other people. Focus on your own growth, um, which is probably the biggest thing that I would say. Uh, don't focus, and it's very hard to do, but don't focus on the the money aspect of it. Focus on the skill and uh focus on the talent to actually trade and the main the main thing is enjoy it enjoy trading uh, if you don't enjoy it you'll you'll struggle to find any sort of motivation to do it because then it feels like a chore to you know you have to sit on the chart at london you have to sit on the chart in the us you know you feel like you're forcing yourself to do it whereas if you're doing it out of enjoyment you'll realize you're in a much relaxed state and i think uh having the financial backing as in having a steady income from elsewhere when you're learning, it allows you to relax a little bit and not force yourself to to try and earn something mm. because I tried it and it, I tried it when I was a student and I really couldn't afford to do it. But I had that pressure to pay off my car at that point. Um, and I was trying to force everything to just pay off that car and it, it, didn't, it didn't really work in that sense. So... Yeah, it's hard to say that I have a financial backing, but make sure you have something in place as a backup when you're learning because you can't guarantee that you're going to make X amount and you'd think about it as a long-term thing. I think everyone focuses on having everything like now, like right now, tomorrow, you expect to be like having thousands. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Cool. Well, look, we're going to dive into the quick fire round here before we wrap up the show. So, how long did, did it take you to go from newbie to consistently profitable? Uh, two years. What's your favourite entry setup? Oh, favourite entry setup. Uh, how do I describe it? Is our two rules on the one minute time frame, and then two rules again on the five second or fifteen second. What strategies do you use to exit or manage trades? Oh, so structure is everything. Uh, structure is where liquidity is sitting. So that's our target points. 
and we exit based on if there's a change in trend. Uh, yeah. What's your recommended trading book or resource? Ah, you know what? I got that. I got that. Uh, this is what um, this book was was so good. I, you know, what? it was a gift. It was a joke gift because people used to call me the forex scammer, <laughs> uh, my friend. So it's called the Black Books, Black Book of Forex Trading. Oh yeah. I, I don't know if you heard of this. Uh, no, it's great. Heard of so this is where I learned supply and demand uh, initially from. The only difference is I'm not I'm not great at following books. To be fair, I need someone to actually teach me, but. This is uh, it was crazy. I always have this with me. Not that I still read it, but yeah, it was it was the start. So a friend gave it to you as a joke, and it was a uh, and it turned out to be a really awesome book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was crazy. Like, it was so Who, what, who's the yeah. author of that? Uh, Paul Langer, and he does. He's got YouTube videos as well okay. showing the strategy. Cool. He didn't have it when I got when I had the book though, but yeah, awesome. <laughs> I always thought this would come up again. <laughs> What's your preferred broker and trading platform? Uh, so I use IC Markets and uh, IG. So IG for spread betting for tax purposes and IC for leverage. Because IG, I'm only allowed to 1 to 100 at the moment, whereas as in the leverage. And then with IC, I can use 1 to 500. Hey, you ever wonder what broker I use? Well, I use Hanko Trade. It was a no-brainer because I was looking for a broker with good trading conditions and no restrictions on trading my strategies. But one of the main reasons was their raw ECN spread, which could challenge any other broker you're trading with. Learn more at HankoTrade.com or click the link in the description. So, and what, play, what trading platform do you, do you use to place the trades? Uh, MT5. Uh, right, <laughs> now, now, now. Uh, can you walk us through the worst ever trade you've had? Um, so the worst trades actually happened. Uh, worst trade I ever had. You know what? I I don't know if I should say it to. You. I was driving. <laughs> I was driving and the alert went off and I actually like parked up. Uh, I wasn't doing it when I was driving, but I parked up, placed the trade, and uh, it lost within seconds. Oh, no. um, all I remember, like I was panicking, but this is when I was. Uh, yeah, this is when I was like very, very excited about trading at that start. At the start, and you know, I was driving with my partner, and I said, "I really need to stop. I really need to stop." So I, bait, I wasn't motivated at that point. I literally stopped on the side to place the trade to find that it it lost as soon as I placed the order. Oh, I placed kidding. the order. I was just about to pull off, and then I see stop loss hit. It's just like an instant. And yeah, don't don't rush. Don't rush any trades. Don't rush. There's a sign of it. Be... If it goes off when you're driving, it's probably not the trade for you. Um, no, right, no. last question of the show. If you could leave our listeners with one piece of advice, what would it be? Uh, one piece of advice. Uh, focus on the long term and focus on yourself. Awesome. Now, before we wrap up, uh, Tans, what's the uh, best way for the traders to get hold of you guys? Uh, our Vertex Investing Instagram is probably our most direct way to message all three of us. Coolio. Or our website. We have a support uh, email there. Well, look, a big thank you to Tans for sharing with us today everything we've discussed here, along with all the links will be in the show notes to find them. Simply search for Tans, that's T-A-N-Z, in the search box on tradingnut.com. Until next time, wish all my listeners trading happiness and success. Hey folks, if you want 10% off the Vertex Investing Trade Management or their two-day boot camp, then use this promo code here at checkout. It's TN10. Use TN10 at checkout on the vertexinvesting.com website and you're going to save yourself 10% off here with Trading Nut. There we go, interview with Tans done and dusted. Do remember we shot that amazing video where he breaks down his entire trading strategy, approach very mechanical to way to get high reward trades or mega reward trades. Got to go and check that out right now. Uh, do remember also whilst you're on tradingnut.com, check out my free trading robot course. I teach you how I build trading robots. You're actually going to see me build one. You're going to have one that you can take away and download and use for yourself. And also there's a few other things in there as well. After that, you might want to consider my Robot Builders Club where I teach you how everything I know about building trading robots without doing any coding and getting them to do virtually anything you want. Uh, fully or semi-automated all over there on tradingnut.com guys remember last but not least your fixed mindset or growth mindset challenge work out what you got especially around your trading all right guys until next time we'll see you in the next episode